G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And today uh, I'm hanging out with Nat from Animals Anonymous and uh, a couple of yellow-footed rock wallabies. So stick around. Today we're having a look at what has to be one of the most colourful macropods in the country. So all up, there's 41 species of kangaroos and wallabies in Australia. And these guys, the yellow-footed rock wallabies, are found throughout arid areas in South Australia, parts of New South Wales and Queensland. But throughout that range, they're really dependent on rocky areas, as you might imagine, being a rock wallaby. So mountain ranges, rocky outcrops. It means that they've got a really patchy distribution. So there's a pocket here and a couple of hundred kilometres and another small population over there. So they're pretty spread out. Living in these environments means that they can use this really three-dimensional terrain to their advantage to escape predators. But it's why they've got such a long tail. This long tail of theirs works really well as a counterbalance. And you see these guys whiz around this enclosure like there's no tomorrow. They're like little marsupial mountain goats. Unfortunately, this terrain is also a favoured habitat of feral goats. And one of the major competitors in the environment today is introduced goats, which live in the same areas and eat the same food. As well as competition with goats, these guys have also had a pretty hard time with hunting for their really colourful fur, as well as introduced rabbits, foxes and cats. On top of that, habitat loss hasn't helped at all, which put these guys on the endangered species list. Luckily, thanks to a lot of hard work from educators like Animals Anonymous and zoos and wildlife parks like Monado Zoo and Arid Recovery in Central Australia, these guys have been reintroduced to a lot of their former range. Despite this increase in their range, things still aren't perfect for them. There's about 2,000 of them living in the wild in South Australia and only a few hundred of them in New South Wales and Queensland. So they're still an animal that we certainly need to look after and the populations that are out there today, while they're starting to do better, are still dependent on our management. We've got to keep making sure that we stay on top of their threats, foxes and cats and things, so that these guys continue to do well into the future. These guys have actually done so well in captivity, however, that the yellow-footed rock wallaby like these guys are actually helping to bring back some of their endangered cousins. Out where I'm from, in Western Victoria, the brush-tailed rock wallaby is critically endangered. Currently, they number eight in the Southern Grampians. Eight. And one of the biggest ways that we're hoping to bring their numbers back is using yellow-footed rock wallabies as foster mothers. In some reserves and wildlife parks, they're basically taking baby brush-tailed rock wallabies and putting them in the pouches of yellow-footed rock wallabies, letting that endangered brush tail have a second joey and breed a lot faster. There's another species of wallaby, the black flanked wallaby, that this is also doing. And thanks to this surrogate program with the yellow-footed rock wallaby, these guys have not only come back themselves, but they're helping their endangered cousins come back as well. So at the end of the day, kangaroos and wallabies are an Australian icon, and most people have some knowledge about them. But what we need is people to have more specific knowledge about these guys. There is so much variety that most people are completely unaware of. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, we can only conserve animals that we actually know about. People are more than willing to conserve animals, but we've got to talk about them and, and put them out in the public sphere. If you start going to wildlife reserves and parks and saying, I want to see yellow-footed rock wallabies, I want to see brush-tailed rock wallabies, there's going to be more time and funds and effort go into these guys. So whether or not they're around in 100, 200 years' time is really up to whether we continue this hard work and keep the good ball rolling. With that in mind, if you want to know more about these guys, as I said, these belong to another wildlife demonstrator called Animals Anonymous. So I'll leave a link to their Facebook page below. Check them out and tell them that Wicked Wildlife sent you. Other than that, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, please hit our subscribe button or like us on Facebook, wherever you watch our videos. And if you want to become more involved and help our videos come out more regularly and get us out and about to visit more facilities like Animals Anonymous here, check us out on Patreon, where you can contribute to our videos getting better and better and coming out more regularly all the time. Other than that, I'll leave it there for now, guys, but thanks for watching, and as always, be nice to wildlife, have a good one, and take care. <laughs>